you got to watch out for this. Uh oh. Because when you're a good looking guy and you get close to 40 and you've never been married, no kids. Yeah. You know what happens is you start, you have a high IQ, you got to maintain your high EQ. Because what happens is, I mean, I, I talked about this in the intro. This sounds so like Vince Vaughn to, right now. The, 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 or this is, no, no, it reminds me more than Vince Vaughn. This is McConaughey, a director's cut outtake from Wolf of Wall Street when he's talking to DiCaprio. So go ahead. If I went to Ann and said, hey, babe, I'm going to take a 12 day cleanse. You got the kids, you got the house, you got the dogs. I'll see you in like two Thursdays. She would, she would literally look at me and say, get out, go stay at a hotel. But when you're, 40, no kids. It's the Overman thing. It's, I love Bill Maher, but it's like you become the center of your universe. Kids humble you. Relationships humble you. Animals humble you. I'm cleaning shit out of my yard four times a day with my dogs. And so you got to be careful, Rosillo, because your life right now is working out, crushing a podcast, and eating steaks. You, you got to be careful. It's a fair observation, I would, I would admit. Um, you know, when, when people try to tell me like, hey, kids completely round you out. It's, it's not that they make you happy all the time. It's that they bring you to even, right? They bring you to even whether it's their support and the younger age's unconditional love or their hatred for you as they grow older. And then it kind of just makes you go, all right, whatever issues I have to deal with, I got to try to get my 14 year old to stop hating me. Um, I understand these things. I do understand the things without understanding it, which is what I try to explain to people. But then I don't know. People never want to hear it. They never want to hear it from somebody that's older and doesn't have any kids. And then I'll just think like, hey, you do realize there's like 7 billion of us. Like there's a lot of people that have had kids. So it's like, you know, see, you're pushing back a little bit. You know, didn't Anne essentially do that to you, though? Oh, she broke up with me seven times. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Right. No, I'm just mean like if you said, hey, I'm taking off for a couple of weeks. She kind of moved. Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, Anne was... <laughs> It was, it was really funny for two people that were in love. It was, we did, we had a lot of conflict. I'm not I mean, talking was, back in the day. I'm not trying to get into your business. I'm sorry if I've touched No, I, I'm fine with it. Right. But she just doesn't deal with my, you know, she's not going to deal with anything. Like if I throw stuff at her, she just throws it right back. But see, this is what I need. I need somebody who likes me, a, but not so much. They want to see me every day. Because that's right. That's what I would need in my life. And that's why I think what you have is perfect, man. So who's your, uh, I don't want to, well, I am going to get personal. So are you dating right now? You're no. not getting this on. No. You're not dating. Oh, Jesus. No. So you're just out there throwing fastballs and seeing who can catch it. That's dangerous. Jesus. I don't even know what that means. You're just means. throwing out, you got 30 pound test line. You got bait on there. You're throwing it out there and just whatever shark grabs it, you're reeling home. Uh, I don't know if that's, I, I finished a feature script the other day. So I was very excited about that. I'm dating my work, Colin. Oh, God, that sounds awful. Yeah, it really I'm, does. I'm in a relationship with art. What are the next 20 years for Colin Cowherd look like? Oh, Jesus. Well, Warren Buffett's 91, Nick Saban's 70, Scully went to 88. Like, I'm I'm mid to late 50s. Like, I'm Scully? not going to stop talking. I mean, he, he literally did it till he was like 88. I'm not going to stop talking. I'm just going to do it on different platforms, maybe. I'm not going to, what, what am I going to, what would I do? play shuffleboard what would i do you at 75 with takes look out america <laughs> you have i watched the <laughs> i watched the carl icon documentary last night and he said he goes retire to what i like competing i like competing i don't want to go into this mush like nick saban said this this abyss of retirement like if you like you're a competitive guy I'm a competitive person. Like, once I'm compete down a ski hill, I mean, like, I'm sorry. I don't even like skiing by myself. I like to go with somebody so I can beat them down the hill. I need to compete, and competing means I'll be on, you know, whatever platform's available. I, I know. I think you said it earlier. A lot of people in the industry, Coward's now a number two starter, and he may be Rich Hill with a couple of bad starts. And then— Is that what the scouting report is on you? Well, you said it. You said I was becoming Rich Hill, breaking shit, can't throw a ball past people. And then all of a sudden the volume started like, fuck that. I am I am Kershaw if you take out the seventh inning of the postseason. I'm you're, getting people out. You're Clemens on vitamin B. 
<laughs> what are you, 39, 38? How old are you? You fuck up my age every time, and I love you How for it. You? I'm 46, man. But you look, you really are a young thinker for 46. I don't think of you, yeah. I, honestly, I think of you as a real young guy. I hear that a lot, and I, I kind of like it. And then sometimes I'm like, does that mean that people just think I'm really immature? Which is also potential potential part of the scattering report but yeah you screw up my age constantly which i i'm yeah, happy I about it i'm happy about it keep doing it i want you tell i want people out in the streets you telling people i'm 39 well you're like harbaugh like which one i always think i mean i would guess harbaugh's 48 he's 58 now you could say yeah oh he should be you know what he's not as successful as i think because he's almost 60 but i'm like yeah but the truth of the matter is he's an incredibly young 58. Like I, Harbaugh to me will coach till he's 80. He's an athlete. I mean, Nick Saban looks great at 70. Harbaugh will be great at 74. I look at you and I'm like, you work out you work out more than any sportscaster in the country. You're like the youngest 40, whatever you are in the industry. Yeah, You're my, like a young. My agent the other day forgot. And he was, cause I said something about like, Hey man, you know, we're getting there where I need to start talking about some of this other stuff. And he was like, well, he goes, you're not even 40. You don't have to worry about it. I was like, look, thanks. But, and then it was, but then, then it goes like, oh shit, you are actually kind of old. Like what's going on with you? Dude, you're not old, dude. Believe me. There's a bed behind you and that's not your bedroom, is it? Yeah, I downsized over here in Torrance. No, you didn't. Is I thought, so you do your podcast from your bedroom. I would think you would do it from upstairs because you have a beautiful view. Why do you do it downstairs? Because I think it's hilarious anytime he sees a breakout video and says, this is what happens to you when you leave ESPN. <laughs> you know, I, I had an agent once tell me, um, he was talking about Regis Philbin. He goes, you'll be fine until the number eight is the first number of your age. He goes, you seven, especially with nutrition, there's just ways to, you know. Fish oil. Extend your... Yeah, like, he's like, the seven thing used to be a number. Like, nobody cares anymore. Like, if you're a producer of revenue, shit, Trump and Biden were two, like, old guys running for president. They blew out all the kids. So it's like, that's a job. I'm just talking. That's like, that's a grown-up job. I've come to terms with that. You know, Joy Taylor had another great point today. I don't want to get political, like, but you maybe do your job better than the last two presidents. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> you can't even get on my case because I was equally fair on that one. So Joy said, you know, they pay the president 400000 She's like, the, what quality are you getting for 400000 She's like, it needs to be paid what the commissioner of a sports league makes. Like $40 million bucks a year, $8 million pension, then like Bezos, and I'm not saying he'd be a great president, but then or the quality of people— Bezos, sorry. The quality of people would—who would run— in the vile nature of the ecosystem today for 400 grand in a tiny pension when by the way you can't open a window at the white house because of security reasons it's All an right. awful job okay yes it's an awful job but the book deals alone after that like look go through all the clinton stuff after the fact go through the obama stuff after the fact and that some people argue trump ran because he was actually broke um there's a big payout for everybody that gets to be president number 40, whatever. So I would agree the salary part of it doesn't make any sense. Do you know back in the day, I don't forget which year it ended. I think it was still going on with Teddy Roosevelt because I was reading a book that you were allowed to go to the White House to talk to the president if you just showed up. Like they had to see you. That was part of the job. That would be like you responding to every tweet every single day, but actually doing it in person. So eventually they ruled that one out because of security reasons alone, I would imagine. And I don't remember the exact time where it was like, okay, we can't be doing this anymore. But um, I think there's a payoff that makes up, that compensates for so the have, salary. Yeah. So according to you, I have to write a book to finally get paid. But somebody else writes it for you too. Did you ever see Veep? Yeah, I thought that was funny. I like Veep. I love Veep. Um, but yeah, there's a, there, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know what the best analogy of is because it's the president, okay? But there, 
nobody, if you're, if you play your cards right and have the right people around you for the right business opportunities, you're going to make millions after you hold the office. Another downer. Everybody looks like crap once they leave the White House. Terrible. Obama looks pretty good, but almost everybody else ages 20 years in four. It's brutal. You wouldn't do that. You'd be on growth hormone. You'd get busted. It'd be a national scandal. Dude, I'm too vain. Seriously. I, I couldn't do it. I Look, I, I couldn't do it. I, mean, I would love it, though. Actually, Colin Cowherd, president. We went from GM to president in 40 minutes, which is impressive. <laughs> but I would love... I would love to hear your speech on like some sort of conflict overseas. You'd be like, look, you know, they, they, they still have basic cable. Of course they're invading people. These people are unhappy. We like choices. It's 2022. We want things fast. We want to hit a button. We want Disney for the kids. We want euphoria for when, when there's the babysitters over, you know, we want happy. Like there's, it's not surprising me that Prussia has their issues. And then people be like, wow, Cowherd, that like I didn't think of it that way. That was a good analogy. 